Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. It's your girl Jackie Ina. Check it, 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 check it. So I guess this is like for real, for real, my first real life mukbang. The setup was actually legitimized and all that good stuff. This video is done in partnership with Audible. Shout out to Audible because let me tell you something: lighting and cameras are not cheap. So shout out to you for keeping the lights on, Audible. I'm going to be testing out some different kombucha flavors and eating my breakfast all at the same time and just chatting about life because why not? So as I mentioned, this video is done in partnership with Audible and Audible is a service that you can use to listen to books, podcasts, news, you name it, they have it on Audible. I have been a partner with them for a while and not only do I find the service really convenient, but it's just really nice to be able to do something all, like honestly if you give me free range to just watch youtube videos all day all the time that's what i would do and i need to break away from that i need to like you know find better ways to spend my free time so i'm really actually glad that i've been using it this year um dennis uses it a lot and also recommended it to me so when i got the opportunity to work with them it just seemed like a no-brainer it was already a goal that i was working on and then i actually got to do this like as a part of what i do for a living they contain audiobooks original shows comedy news right now i'm restarting patrick Stephen furtick's crash the chatterbox it is a sermon i have listened to many a times Okay, just some of his messages are things that I personally I need to repeat and rehear periodically throughout the year. So I'm just gonna reread it again. What I like about audiobooks is, you know, right now it's summer, well, depending on where you're from, I guess. It's really a, a nice way to just kind of take your mind off of stress. I, I take my audio bits when I'm on a road trip. My Audible link is www.audible.com slash Jackie Ina, as you can see by the link here. With my link, you get a 30 day free trial membership. Shout out to everybody who's already utilized it. I see those tweets, I see those Instagram DMs. So go to that link to start your free trial or you can text Jackie Ina to 500-500 to get started today. Audible.com slash J-A-C-K-I-E-A-I-N-A. -A. You get free credits every month. If you don't like your audiobook, you can swap it out. And your books are not rentals, they're yours to keep permanently. You get one audiobook per month. You can download the app on your iPad, iPhone, Android, or Windows phone. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. So for breakfast, I'm having a breakfast burrito. Nice and toasted. Do you see the charcoal marks? I have a cup of fruit. I've got some turkey bacon. This is no shade or anything, but I feel like if I tell you where I ordered from, it would like low key be put in where I live on blast and I'm not gonna do that. All you need to know is I live in LA and I'm eating the breakfast burrito and it's real good. You guys also know I'm a huge, huge fan of kombucha. It's a fermented tea, it's organic, and this is supposed to be a probiotic fermented super tea Ooh, this one has mushroom Ooh. it is a fermented tea that is um good for the gut good for the intestines it helps with the digestive system it's just genuinely a product that i really like it was actually funny because i've been getting so many messages from people telling me like yo you put me on to kombucha and i low-key feel proud i feel proud of myself i don't ever promote stuff that's not actually good you know and i figured i would try some of the new ones i've never tried before while i eat my breakfast and talk about relevant stuff. I'm gonna try the reishi chocolate. It's got reishi mushroom and chocolate in it, which is like kind of weird, but okay. First of all, I can't stand mushroom. It's one of my, like I try so hard. I hate mushroom. I hate mushroom with a passion. Dang, it's hard to open, what the heck? Also, I'm kind of new to this whole mukbang thing and I just feel like, why is it that the grosser people are, the more views they get? Like that's just disgusting, man. I've seen some of these mukbangs and food gushing. I mean, I'm a messy eater, but like, Yo, you don't feel when it's hanging out your mouth? Like, that's gross. Let me not sit here and talk about a whole genre that I know nothing about and that I barely even contribute to. All right, I'm gonna I'm a stop, I'm gonna chill, I'm gonna chill. So the best way that I could describe the taste of kombucha is it reminds me, it's a little reminiscent of like apple cider vinegar, but not nearly as offensive. It's like, it's got that kind of vinegary taste. Okay, so this is reishi mushroom. It's not bad. Do you wanna talk about the old YouTube. Missing the old YouTube and really why it's never coming back. By the way, if you don't like turkey bacon, you're demonic and young mentor shouldn't trust you. By the way, if this is your first time watching any of my videos, I've been on YouTube since 2009. I say that a lot because I feel like it's important for people to just know where you come from, where you've been, where you going. Watching YouTube basically from the ground up. But when I started my YouTube channel, I knew people were making money, but I don't think I realized like how how big the opportunities really were at the time. But did I want to make money? Of course, I didn't have any. That's why most of you were on YouTube. 
Is it true or not? The old YouTube that I remember was like a much more friendlier environment, a much less competitive environment. You didn't have to have a super fancy camera. The camera that I'm filming on right now is like three grand. The lens is like 1500. The light, I think that was like 6,000. None of that stuff was needed back then. If it was, I wouldn't have had a channel at all. People like to say YouTube was all about artistry and all about talent. Talent definitely got you further back then than it does now. That wasn't the only thing. Because if that was all it took, there'd be a lot more women and men. Talent is not the only thing that people looked for back then. So I don't like when people try to say, YouTube used to be all about talent and blah, blah, blah. By the way, I thought I should mention what's in my burrito. There's egg, potato, and chicken. I think they messed something. They did something different today. I'm not amused. Anyway, this whole chatter about the old YouTube and where it's gone, where it's been, blah, blah, blah. Honestly, like I feel like now more than ever, everyone has a fair shot. And by that, I mean people who aren't necessarily good at makeup. And I just kind of feel like we have to be careful with this whole like talent meant something because I think that there are people who add value to YouTube who may not be the best at makeup, who may not be the most fashionable, who may not fit the stereotypical beauty norms. For you to say talent meant something to me is a little like, it comes off a little elitist, you know? And I say that because I used to think that way. I used to think that way five, six years ago because my channel was failing and I was looking at everybody else like, they're not even as good as me. They're not even a professional makeup artist. They can only do makeup on themselves. And I was so wrapped up and caught up in that that I couldn't stop and realize like, ma, but like they have numbers. I also wanna give you guys a background story about my YouTube channel what I've been through, how I got to where I am today. This actually does taste kind of chocolatey, it's weird. It's kind of good. <laughs> I don't taste any mushroom, at least not reishi mushroom, Risha reishi. I don't know what kind of mushroom that is, but whatever it is, I don't taste it. So I got interviewed by Business Insider a week ago and they talked about like my career, like what was the defining moment for me, all that good stuff. So I'm kind of spoiling this interview, but it's my channel, I can do what I want. <laughs> 2014, I had this roommate, like my channel was just, you know, like, it was bigger than the average channel, but put it this way, I've been on YouTube for five years and it took me like four or five years to get to 100,000. So needless to say, a chick was frustrated, okay, ma? And yeah, it is frustrating to see you perfected your craft, you've invested in your craft. I went to cosmetology school, I became a licensed hairdresser. In my head, that was like my way of like legitimizing my career as, a, as an artist. I worked at MAC, I worked for Bobby Brown, like I had clients, I even had some celebrity clients. And so it's frustrating when you see that people who haven't invested as much are getting further than you. At least that's how it viewed to me. And I was just kind of venting to my roommate this one year, like I said, it was 2013 or 2014, I don't remember. I was just kind of like, yeah, these people are just like not even talented. Like, why is it that they get all these opportunities and why is it that their channels are flourishing and growing and blah, blah, blah. Just all the typical grunts of someone who was like, low-key jealous. Like, that's what it was, I was jealous. She said something to me that I'll never forget and Depending on how you view it, the average person I think would view this as shady. Because a lot of people like to say, I don't take criticism. It's not that I don't take criticism, it's just a lot of y'all don't even know where the criticism comes from. Like you don't have the resume to give it, okay? I don't take golf advice from Nicki Minaj. You know, she's a rapper. That's her lane. I'll go to her when I wanna be a rapper. I'm not gonna take basketball advice from Serena Williams. I'd ask her to teach me how to play tennis but that's her lane, you know? So a lot of people online, Twitter, a great example of this, like to, but don't have anything to back it up or show for it. When people say that I don't know how to take criticism. It's like, mm, be surprised. You'd be surprised how much self-reflecting I do. Anyway, so she said to me, after I vented about how much of a hater I was, basically, after I vented to her, she was like, you know what? They may not be professional makeup artists. They may not be working makeup artists but they know how to reach numbers and that's a talent, right? Isn't that what you want? So how can you hate on that? That is a skill. And I was like, you know what? Some points were made. I mean, I feel like we can even bring up the Kardashians, for example. Numbers don't lie. People don't need to follow them for a, a viable skill or a talent. Like. They're just likable people to some people. To a lot of people, it's their personalities. It's like just genuinely being vested and interested in what they do, it's all that good stuff. Look, I'm not gonna sit here and defend them in any manner. Um, there are things that like morally I don't like that they do. I'm not talking about like the beginning. I'm not talking about 
the tape or anything like that. I'm not talking about that. Numbers don't lie, bro. Like people obviously like something about them. There's obviously something that people are interested in. And so to me, that is a skill. Like if anything, that's a bigger skill than anything because that kind of legitimizes you even more because you didn't really have a tangible or viable skill, yet you still managed to become successful. I think there's something to be said about that. That conversation that I had with my roommate really made me take a hard look at that and like understand like, wow, she's right. I think people just like them. And for me, that was the aha moment. I see a lot of people complain about having talent, not numbers, having talent, not numbers. And I understand because I've been there and I get it. I think now more than ever, we understand that talent isn't everything. Like you have to really actually be a likable person. As frustrating as that is, it's also a good thing because what if talent was the only qualifier? What if talent was the only thing it took to have a big platform and to be successful? There would be a lot of really stupid people there already are, but there would be way more really horrible people, really terrible people with platforms just because they're talented. Talent's not everything and we you need to stop, like stop thinking that way. And what I want to say about the old YouTube is never coming back. It's deceased, it's dead, RIP. And that's kind of bittersweet, but what people don't realize is like the bar to be a YouTuber is here now. It's up here. Okay. Film and Unfortunately, whether people would admit this or not, we don't set that bar. We don't set that bar. At what point do you think the first YouTuber thought it's gonna be, well, people do that, but what the hell is that outside of my window? Oh, that's the reflection of my plant. <laughs> the problem that people don't wanna see is like, oh, I, mi I miss when YouTubers weren't money hungry and I miss when YouTubers didn't, um, do as many sponsorships and blah, blah, blah. Maybe if you didn't spend so much time roasting people for the clothes that they wear, for the way that their hair look, for the way that their skin looks. One time I did a clothing haul and someone actually tried to roast me because I had wire hangers. Wire hangers, my dude. A pretty normal thing to do, but apparently that just wasn't good enough for that person. And they were like, you're too fancy. I'm just like, like who, it's, it's the people who watch the videos that push for more and more and more. And like, when is it gonna be enough? Like. When can you just enjoy someone's content? When can you just enjoy someone for who they are and what they bring to the table? I don't think we'll ever get to that point. YouTube is just like, now we're gonna switch to ginger lemon. This is actually one of my favorites. YouTube is just so curated at the hands of people who watch this. It's like, y'all don't understand. I, I just, I just truly don't think people understand the magnitude of like, how over the top and ridiculous comments get. And don't get me wrong, like I love my viewers. My viewers really put me on in a way that I never thought possible. There is an insane amount of support, but sometimes I feel like the same people who build you up also wanna see you fail. And I saw a tweet last night basically saying like, you know, oh yeah, I love supporting people until they get too big for your liking or until, you know, and it's, it's, it's honestly true. Like I feel like it's just becoming really therapeutic. <laughs> I feel like people weren't so hell bent on hyper critiquing every single thing about every video. People would be way more chill. Trust me when I say this. I just don't think it's ever gonna get to that. And it's sad because I miss the regular days of YouTube, the basic days of YouTube. I don't know, girl, it's just a mess. People are literally a mess on this platform. I'm also starting to see that support shifted when they realized the things that I attained were now within reach, you know? A year ago, I was the underdog, and now I'm not anymore. Not that I expect to be. The same people who would, yes, yeah, sis, gas me up, like, last fall, are now the loudest ones talking about how much I've changed. I'm like, there's nothing, nothing is really, Nothing's really changed. I think I just have more now and I show a little bit more now than I ever did. That now people are really like, oh, she really, she's really made it. Like, I don't know, I guess in, in some people's eyes I've, I represent a different type of level of success, which honestly, from the outside looking in, I would think that people would admire. Apparently, there's a YouTube, just know if there's a YouTuber or even a brand that I'm really quiet about, really like suspiciously quiet about, just know that I'm being diplomatic and not sharing what kind of effed up stuff they've done to me. 
Like, you don't ever have to ask, why don't you ever support so-and-so? Why don't you ever film with so-and-so? The mystery is that I don't want to be messy and I don't want to draw more attention to a situation that really doesn't need to be drawn. I don't have to talk about everything. I'm learning that lesson this year. I don't have to talk about and share everything. But if you're wondering why, just in the back of your mind, just think like, Something must have happened. Maybe she doesn't want to talk about it. Maybe she's not comfortable. Maybe she's being the bigger person. More likely than not, it's probably the latter. I think a couple weeks ago, I got a comment saying, um, cause I was doing, I do my Instagram Q and A's and um, someone had said, oh, there's a YouTuber who basically came out and said that I started at the same time they did. And I just like, didn't pay my dues or I didn't pay it forward back to them or something along the lines of that, which was, honestly just really just a mess so ginger ginger lemon tastes a little bit more like ginger than it does lemon but my all-time favorite flavor of kombucha is cayenne because she's spicy she's got a little kick in the back of the throat <coughs> cayenne is so good i love this one then again i like spicy drink there's three sides to every story and yes i will even say my side their side and the truth because sometimes when you're just really emotional when you're really passionate about something your views can get skewed, you can be a little biased, but trust me, I have tried and tried and tried and tried and tried. Woo! And also, by the way, the beauty community is not in shambles. You guys are just following problematic people. Beauty community is fine on my newsfeed. I also think that professional makeup artists need to relax. And I can say this because I, I was one. I just think that people just need to relax. Like what influencers do and what professionals do are completely different. And I feel like if you have to keep trying to expose someone, or if you have to keep trying to come for someone, like there's only so many times you can say, I don't support this person for X, Y, Z, but sometimes it's overdone. And I think that what, what I'm seeing is a lot of people losing their bearing. I just don't want to continue to see this beef between like pros versus influencers, influencers versus influencers versus the followers, the fans feel like they're being deceived, which to be quite honest, most of you really are just assuming that the two or three people that are doing the deceptive behavior is a reflection of the beauty community as a whole and it's not anyway i know that's really vague but that's just my thoughts on it go out and get some kombucha damn it it tastes amazing please do not get in the comments and turn this into a gossiping cesspool can you do me a favor instead of going on a on a hunt for like who should talk about who because i'm just gonna delete the comment or i'm gonna have a moderator delete the comment can we just talk about like what we learned from today's video or like what change you'd like to see in the beauty community or like, oh, maybe I said something that you didn't realize or maybe you want to add to that. Please don't go in the comments and name drop. Like, I just don't like that. I will talk to you guys in the next video as I'm going to leave right here while I drink my kombucha. And no, I'm not sharing. Bye.